Hi. We're in um, Springfield, Illinois, home of uh, Abraham Lincoln. So now we're heading to the Lincoln Museum. We're gonna watch a film there and uh, we'll go from there. So we're gonna see the museum and then I think we're also gonna see where Abraham Lincoln's house was. Museum, yeah, which yeah. should be cool. Yeah, and then there's also a little tiny um, replica of the community in which Abraham Lincoln lived. It's behind that white fence behind us, so we get to walk around there. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. $1,500. The way Mr. Lincoln moved in, the house would not have looked as extensive as it does today. I want you all to imagine taking that entire second floor, wiping it completely out of the picture, letting the roof fall down on top of the first floor. That gives you some idea how it looked when we moved in. It was considered a cottage at that time, just a single story with an attic loft up above. Now, as Mr. Lincoln finds more success here in town as a lawyer and politician, as his influence grows and his family grows in size as well, he can afford to have the house expanded several times. The latest of which is in 1856, when the entire second floor is added up on top and the house is in its current finished state. So, when we do get up to that second floor, we will be standing in an area about 17 years newer than the rest of the home. Fun fact there. Everyone, welcome. <clears throat> here we are inside the building. It is actually that we welcome you in this room first because if you had been guests of the Lincolns in 1860, this is the room where you would have been welcomed as well. This is known as the formal parlor. It is for this because this is the room where you host your parties, your formal events, special gatherings, things like that, uh, all that and more. Now for all those purposes, there is one thing this room is not for and that is family time. The Lincolns boys, their sons, would not have been allowed here in the parlor. In fact, if there was no party that day, these doors would have just been kept closed and locked. Those boys kept out. Notorious troublemakers, those Lincoln boys. They would love to get in here and smash the place up, I am sure. If you doubt me on that, you should make a trip down the block to the Presidential Museum. You'll see a scene recreated there where those boys are inside Mr. Lincoln's office. Yes, all of that belonged to the Lincolns. The couches, the rocking chairs, the chairs under the windows, all of those are the families. Other original pieces in these rooms include that marble top table there under the mirror. Uh, we also have this uh, five level shelf behind me on the back wall, this little spindly thing. That is called a whatnot shelf. Yes, because you loaded up with here in his parlor and, and they formally notify him he has been selected as the candidate for his party in the presidential election. They say, Mr. Lincoln, we want you to be our man. We want you to do it. Will you run? Yes or no? What do we think Mr. Lincoln says to that question? I heard both. So, uh, because people think, of course, he does become the president. They also think I'm tricking you with a trick question. So they say no. Fact is, he didn't say yes. He also didn't say no. What he says to the men that day is, let me think about it. It's a big decision, right? Especially given the circumstances of the country at the time. Um, that, but you know, he does want the country to improve. He and his party represent the belief that slavery will not expand to any new territories added to the Union. That is a hot button issue of the day, and he will not budge on that one. So that's something to consider as well. It takes him three full days to think of an answer. After three days, though, he arrives at the decision we know he eventually makes. Yes, it's a risk worth taking. It's a chance he wants. He writes back and he accepts that nomination. The rest, as we say, is history, right? We also say that Mr. Lincoln's formal road to the White House starts right here in his parlor. Pretty important room, not just for Lincoln, but for American history. The room where Lincoln learned he can be president. Uh, pretty important for that reason as well. Really a turning point happens here in this parlor. So, pretty neat space. We are going to move along from here after this though. I'm gonna send you through the dining room next. You'll take a look at those original dining room table and chairs. Mary Lincoln's original cake stand on that far wall. I am sorry, the cake on the cake stand is not original, nor is it edible. I am sorry. And see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. unfolding on the floor like a wrestling match between her boys. Those Lincoln boys love to get down and wrestle on the floor of the sitting room. When I say the Lincoln boys, Abraham is one of those boys. He wrestles his sons right here in the sitting room. Lincoln is actually a very, very good wrestler, very accomplished. Lincoln is the winner of over 300 wrestling matches in his life. And he is in the Wrestling Hall of Fame as well. That is true. So, I am sure his young sons were no match for him then. But hopefully, being a good dad, maybe he let them win once or twice, right? We like to think so. 
But if those boys did not want to be so physically active, they could enjoy some other kinds of games uh, over at that table, other forms of entertainment, the red tablecloth there that you see. They could play board games like good old chess, or if they want to be a bit more technologically advanced, they'd use that funny looking wooden box contraption there. Looks like it has a pair of goggles on the front of it. That is an original piece as well. Lincoln bought that item for about $25. That is close to $900 today. What could be so expensive, I hear you ask? Well, it is the wonder of the modern age. It is called a stereoscope. The way it worked is you open up the top. Inside, there are slots to which you fit those cards you see on the table there. <clears throat> those cards have double images on them. So you slot those in the top, you find the picture you want, you look in the eyepieces, and the image pops out at you in 3D. Everybody act very impressed. Ooh. Thank you, good job. Yeah. Remember, um, this is the age before film. No TV, no movies. Even photography is still very new, not very accessible. So the idea of having not just a photographic image, but a three-dimensional one showing far off places like the pyramids of Egypt or ancient Rome, right in front of your eyes here in Illinois, that's a big deal. That would have made Willie and Tad, the two young Lincoln boys, the envy of all the other kids in the neighborhood. They would have all wanted to play with that piece. As you can see, the stereoscope is still in very good condition. Leads us to believe the Lincolns were pretty picky about who got to touch it. I would be too if it cost me $900. There it is, pretty neat. <laughs> Uh, as you've gathered by now, I'm sure this room was a hub of activity between all the wrestling matches, the fun, the games, the running around, lots of high energy. That high energy was not just because of the human family members, there were animal family members here as well. The Lincolns have several pets. Their most well-known pet is a dog, a yellow Labrador mix named Fido. Yes, their dog's name really was Fido. He runs around here playing with those boys and chasing some cats as well, because the Lincolns have any number of cats in the house at one time. Mr. Lincoln himself, more than any is a cat person. So much so, he likes to pick up stray cats off the street when he comes home from work. He carries them right into the house and lets them go here on the floor. Mary Lincoln says, her husband's greatest passion in this world is not law, not politics, it is cats. So, <clears throat> two things to remember about Mr. Lincoln if you remember nothing else today. Please remember that he was a great wrestler and a great cat lover, right? Both very true. A little known facts about him. So that's the sitting room, the room that exemplifies that atmosphere of family togetherness, where they could all be themselves, sharing the same space together, more than any other room in the house. Pretty nice for that reason. So, all right. Okay. Room. There we go. So, here we are, folks, in the Lincoln's kitchen. It's a bit more cramped and crude than a modern kitchen, right? Lacking some of the appliances we'd expect to find. No fridge, no microwave, no running water or electricity of any kind. Makes cooking a bit more difficult than we find it today. Especially because for the majority of years they lived here, the Lincolns would have done their cooking over an open fire. Would have been that basic. But by 1860, Abraham realized that they could do a bit better than that. He gets an upgrade. That upgrade is what you see right here on the floor today. That is the original. It's the Lincoln's cast iron wood burning stove uh, that he bought for the family. Quite an impressive piece of hardware. It has a multitude of uses as well. It's got that stove top, it has an oven on the inside, and it has what we call the apron that hangs off that front. You can use to not only keep your bits of food nice and hot, but also heat up your irons to keep your clothes nice and iron fresh too. So it really is a multi-purpose tool. Mary and the hired girl use that stove every day. Mary, in particular, loves that stove. So much so, she wants to take it with them to Washington when it's time to move. Lincoln has to convince her. The White House has a fully stocked kitchen already. We don't need our stove as well. Now they can do here. And I don't blame Mr. Lincoln for that, because I wouldn't want to even try moving that thing, much less haul it halfway across the country. No, thank you. Uh, you see, though, a lot of the foods they would have made with it are very recognizable to us. We've got on the stove there bacon and pancakes and biscuits. Over on the kitchen table, you see fresh bread, fish, loaves of, yeah, loaves of bread, fresh fish, eggs, and vegetables. We are now on the other side of that dining room we walked through at the beginning of the tour. Over there was a nice ham on display. We also saw Mary Lincoln's specialty, her white almond cake that she makes for Abraham on his birthdays. Um, now I want everyone to take note of the size of this kitchen between the four walls just at this one room. Take note of that. It is important to know because, as it turns out, this kitchen is the same size as the log cabin where Mr. Lincoln was born, where he lived as a young boy with up to eight other people at once. Humble beginnings is an understatement, right? That is where he comes from. He has less than a year of formal school altogether in his life. Uh, so he teaches himself to read, essentially. When he grows up, he teaches himself law practice as well moves uh, here to the state capital of Illinois to make a name for himself. And thankfully, he does get that career off the ground here in town, but more than that, he also finds a welcoming community and a loving family here in town as well. All that allows him to call this place home for longer than he's ever lived anywhere else or will again. 
Uh, this is Springfield is his home for over 20 years. This house for 17 of those years. So Springfield is really the place where Lincoln becomes the man he was meant to be. And if you don't take my word for that, you can take Lincoln's own words for it. Because when he left town, he stood on the back of the train to take him to Washington. A crowd of Springfield residents gathered at the station to see him off. Lincoln addressed that crowd. He told them, and I quote here, to this place and the kindness of these people, I owe everything. Here I have lived a quarter of a century and have passed from a young to an old man. So, shows you how much he appreciated this community, how much he saw it as home. That is why to this day, we call our entire historic site here the Lincoln Home, because to us the entire community was home for him for so long. But we hope bringing you through the house today has given you some deeper appreciation for Lincoln. You've learned something, you can see him on more of a human scale. That's our goal here. Uh, he's more than just that mythic face on Mount Rushmore. He's a hardworking, dedicated, driven man, a loyal husband and father, and of course, two more things to never forget that he was a wrestler and a cat lover, right? All that and so much more. So thank you, folks. This does bring us to the end of our tour of the home today. It's been a pleasure to bring you through. On behalf of the National Park Service, <clears throat> I want to say thank you all so much. We are going to head up this back. Here we are at the other side of the street. We just went through Lincoln's house, which was super spectacular, and really well preserved and um, kind of inspirational. I didn't know that Lincoln loved cats, and he was a famous wrestler. Did you, Ted? I knew he was a wrestler, but I didn't know he was in the, the world record, and I did not know about the cats. That makes yeah. me like him even more. Yep. But this is the community in which Abraham Lincoln actually would have been walking the streets and everything is just really well preserved and everything here is free to walk around the tour the museum the shop it's all free it's really cool we know what we have let's hold on tight found what we're looking for in life call us crazy but things are finally right Right.